Hi, wine friends, and happy Wine Wednesday. If you are new, I'm Allie from The Glass After Work. Thanks for joining. So today I am going to share with you an Australian wine. Um, all of these wildfires in Australia has me really thinking about the fact that I don't drink a lot of Australian wine. I'm not really familiar with Australian wine, and I would like to be able to help. And it seems like a good way to help would be to buy some of their wine and talk about it and share it with, with you all. So with that in mind, I recently bought a case of wine from wine.com. I would say it is 75% Australian wine. It's not 100%. There's a couple of other things in there, but I did mostly go for Australian. So I thought I would start our Australian wine adventures with the 2017 McPherson Wine Company Pinot Gris. It's 100% Pinot Gris and the grapes are all grown in the Victoria region of Australia. The winery itself is a family-owned winery. It was established in 1968 by Jack McPherson and now um, Andy McPherson runs it. He and his wife uh, live overlooking the vineyards. Um, and uh, the winemaker is Joe Nash. So the interesting thing about this is that it is a white wine, but um, the grapes do sit on the skins for a little bit, and that actually gives the wine just the tiniest hint of almost like a yellowish golden color. Uh, so it's definitely a little different. White wines don't sit on their uh, skins. Um, that's usually something that we reserve for doing with the red wines. And so it's gonna make, my guess is this is gonna make it a little more tannic, but it definitely is something that shows up in the color. Uh, no matter what. All right, so why don't we dig on in? Oh, interesting nose. Um, okay, I'm getting some pears and some lychee, so some kind of tropically flavored fruit. Also getting a little bit of honey, something a little sweet on the nose. A little bit of like almonds, kind of nuts. All right, uh, why don't we give it a taste? Cheers. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it sits on the skins a little bit, it gives it a much kind of fuller, rounder flavor. Um, definitely a lot of almond notes in the mouth. Getting a little bit of like red delicious apples, uh, still getting some of those lychee and pear notes. Also getting a little bit of like white pepper, some kind of spiciness to it a little bit. Um, it's, I would say it's got some really nice acidity. Uh, it reminds me a little bit, almost, in some ways it almost reminds me a little bit of a, of a Gewürztraminer. So it's got some, Good acidity, some good body, a little bit of those spicy notes. I think this would be a fantastic seafood wine if you're eating some seafood, some oysters, or um, maybe like a grilled, you know, swordfish or something like that. Mm. Definitely is going to be food friendly. I'm, I really enjoy this. I know that not all of the wineries in Australia have been impacted by the fires, but still the idea of being able to support the Australian winemakers as they're trying to move forward and, and, and try to recover. It just, it just seemed to me like that was a, a, a good, a good thing to do and a, and a good way to expand my horizons and drink a little more of the Australian wines. I'd love to know, do you drink Australian wines? Do you like them? Do you have any wineries that I should check out? Like I said, this is a totally new um, area for me to explore. I, I really am, I'm, I'm an open book. So let me know in the comments down below. And so if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate those. If you aren't already a subscriber, you can do that by clicking on the icon right here or in the subscribe button down below. But don't forget, also click on that bell because it will notify you when I upload a new video, which is gonna be a free wine Wednesday. And if you're looking for a recommendation, you can find one right there. Thanks for joining and have a happy wine Wednesday. Cheers.